And so, the weird animation starts again. Granted, this episode was storyboarded by two people rather than just one, but that doesn't make these pieces of animation any less weird looking. This was once a communication hub for Gemkind, but lately, it's begun transmitting bursts of electromagnetic interference. What reason would it have to do that? Surely the Gems or any of the life on Earth hasn't messed with this thing for possibly thousands of years in order for it to activate. And even if this was somehow caused by natural sources, I highly doubt anything on Earth would be able to make a piece of complicated gem tech actually do anything. We need a Steven at least this strong for this job. It's all the me I could be. Also, why is Amethyst Gem still shown when she shapeshifts into Steven here? When the other time she did, her gem was hidden. The piece of pillar that Pearl is holding disappears in between these shots. What in the hell was going through the storyboarders' minds when they were animating this monstrosity? Ah! Why they made Amethyst sound like a woodpecker here is an absolute mystery to me. We don't need to be careful, we just need to be huge. Wow, I sure wish Garnet had a certain power that would allow her to look into future possibilities to see what a bad idea this could turn out to be. But I guess we can only dream, huh? All jokes aside though, even without future vision, you'd think that Garnet, the person on the team that I'd classify as the most level-headed, would realize that Sardonyx would be more than enough to take care of this, and that risking Sugalite is not even remotely close to necessary. What reason would Garnet have to want to risk it? I know I'm gonna be a bit broad for this next one, but... You know, for as much as the Crewniverse denies the fan theory that Fusion was an allegory for sex, they sure do make the dances in these earlier seasons very... suggestive in some places. Seriously, Pearl covers Steven's eyes here and blushes like this is some kind of sacrilegious thing that isn't appropriate for him. Garnet quite literally spreads her legs here as Amethyst approaches. In season two, Pearl does this pose and makes this look, which... Come on. Then later, Pearl's description of this event sounds very similar to literal rape, where if you replace the word fuse with the word fuck, it's eerie how well it fits despite it, quote, not always being sexual. Now, I don't agree with this theory anymore because I now think fusion is just an allegory for different relationships in general rather than it always being sexual. But the point I'm trying to make is if the Kruniverse was trying to get that point across, they didn't do a very good job. What reason would Garnet and Amethyst have to dance suggestively here? What reason would Garnet and Pearl have to dance suggestively here? It feels less like them building a coherent concept and more like from season Season 3 onwards, they retconned all this weird shit from Seasons 1 and 2 and didn't really acknowledge it beyond that. Also, how exactly does Sugalite and by extension the fusing of Gem's personalities work? Considering that the fusion is technically between Amethyst, Ruby, and Sapphire, you'd think that the Sapphire part of the fusion would at least try to balance out Ruby and Amethyst's brashness. Instead, it almost feels like this is purely a fusion between Ruby and Amethyst and Sapphire isn't even in it. And hell, in Giant Woman, it definitely felt like Opal had way more pearl in her than she did Amethyst. So it makes me wonder if there are any rules to this or if the Kruniverse just winged it depending on the situation. Sugalite's chest is the wrong color in this shot. Also, where did Amethyst and Pearl go in this shot? You like that, little man? Stop it. Lars' feet are supposed to be spread apart in this shot, as shown here in this previous shot, but this angle makes it look like one foot is on top of the other. I got hit by a rock! That rock either hit Steven's eye or hit the area under it. How did he get a scar above his eye? If I weren't so modest, I'd whip out my sweet six-pack and show you what a real man looks like. Ugh. Yeah, I'm not gonna say thanks. Lars Sandwich disappears in this shot. We all need a workout! If Sadie's little display earlier is anything to go by, no she does not. And you don't have to starve to death if Sadie divorces you! We're not married! Greg's sandals keep disappearing and reappearing over the course of this scene. I've been slacking on my workout routine for a few weeks, months, years, decades. The more the meteor! Stop it! Again, can't play it for very long, but this song absolutely rocks. I can show you how to be strong in the real way. This one in particular gives me a real sense of nostalgia back to when I first watched Steven Universe because this song really stuck with me. That's how you know you've nailed a song. However... Why do you have to look up to her, aside from in a literal sense? Did you really have to clarify? 
Don't you know that a power that big comes with a bigger expense? I mean, Sardonyx and Opal are pretty big, but we sure don't see you complaining about the possible expense of forming Sardonyx in particular. Also, the clothes that Pearl picked up from the ground disappear in this shot. I could show you how to be strong. So Steven can hear Pearl, right? Is he just choosing to ignore her? Does he think she's wrong? Why doesn't he at least acknowledge her side before doubling down on his method? Also, Pearl must have a tendency to make clothes disappear because the shirt she was just holding does so here as well. We can be strong in the real way. Surely rumpling up that shirt like that before then proceeding to fold it wouldn't make it look that neat. The way Steven just disappears here when Pearl moves looks weird. I get what they were going for, but it just doesn't look right to me. I don't wanna see your gut! I wanna see your guts! You know, I would say stop it, but I actually really like that line, so I'll give you that one. With how close this one light is, you'd think they would give it at least a little more detail than just a rough sketch. This shot hangs for just a little longer than I think it should. And I know that we can be strong in the real way. Also, Steven's sweatband must be made of magic if it can just switch colors like that. You've just been singing some dumb song. But you're doing a great job pumping us up. This is a really good bit of foreshadowing as to how Steven as a whole contributes to the Crystal Gems later. Your voice inspires us, binds us, reminds us why we promised to protect the planet. I'm switching to four-wheel drive! We can't work out without your mad coaching skills! Mad coaching skills? Steven, get out of here! Did you really need to throw him? Also, this is a fun face to give Steven for a full two seconds. Sugalite's flail lands on the beach in this shot, but then in the next shots, they make it look like the flail hit the house. Also, one of Sugalite's gemstones is not only on the wrong hand in this shot, but it looks more like a grape than a gemstone. Pearl should not need to flutter her feet here, it just looks weird. To be perfectly honest with you, there are probably less things drawn right about Sugalite in this shot than there are things drawn wrong. Why do they just separate rather than poofing here? I get they want to save Garnet's reveal until the return and jailbreak, but then why put them in a situation where they should have been poofed? Garnet's shoulder pad isn't the right color in this shot. Yellowtail isn't even in this episode. Why is he in the credits? So sore from getting ripped.